Welcome to the Matt Beck Podcast. Woke up this way. He's got a lot of cool stuff he's going to show you today. The latest news, industry topics, and business tips. For all hairstylists and salon owners, it's time to flip the script. Grab your precision scissors, barber combs, and swivel twist razors. Let's cut a bob, a quick shag, pixie cut with a little bit of flavor. Check out the live classes, product reviews, let's rock on. Don't forget to check out freesaloneducation.com. I woke up this way. It's going to be a great day. Chop it, clip it, spray it, flip it. I woke up this way. It's gonna be a great day. Chop it, flip it, spray it, flip it. Let me show you the way. It's gonna be a great day. Chop it, flip it, spray it, flip it. I woke up this way. It's gonna be a great day. Chop it, flip it, spray it, flip it. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Woke Up This Way podcast. Let me see if I can. Here we go. Uh, welcome to the podcast. It's usually Woke Up This Way because it's in the morning. Not in the morning today. Changing it up. Had a lot to do today. Uh, so I'm excited to gather with you all so I can see you guys logging on, saying hello. Uh, we're live on Facebook, all kinds of different Facebook pages, and also on YouTube as well. So um, excited to chat with you guys. I have a ton of questions that you guys submitted through Instagram. Uh, I'm not live on Instagram, <laughs> but that's okay. We'll post this on Instagram later. But you guys asked a lot of questions on, on Instagram, so I want to get to those. But I also want to answer any questions you guys have that are on live as well. So start posting those in the chat. I can see all the different chats uh, through there. So hello from Scotland. Hello. Uh, Jennifer, hello. Nicole. Lisa. Vanessa, Kim, there's some names I can't pronounce, so I'm not gonna. <laughs> so, uh, welcome to the studio. Welcome to the podcast. I feel good to be back. Uh, this podcast is brought to you by MinervaBeauty.com. Uh, if you guys are looking for salon furniture, looking to up your salon furniture game, then uh, check out my friends at MinervaBeauty.com. They're the best. They have the best prices. Um, they furnished our entire salon. Uh, it's beautiful stuff and, uh, they're real awesome people. So if you guys need upgrades on tools, furniture, and also, uh, there's a really cool cart giveaway that we did on YouTube as well. So if you guys had a chance to check out that video, um, they have a new color cart. That's pretty awesome. I wish I could pull it over here, but, uh, check it out on their uh, website, but go to MinervaBeauty.com. They're my friends and, uh, support them. So yeah, everyone's saying hello. Dallas, Texas, Pakistan. People from all over. It's been slow at work lately, Jennifer says. I wonder if other salons are seeing this too right now. So here's what I would say. Actually, that's a good way to kick off um, today's podcast is salon, uh, the busyness of a salon. And this has been, you know, I'm 15, 16, almost 16 years in the business now. Um, I think it's actually 15, uh, but 15 years in and the wave of the salon, October's always been slow for us. Um, it's actually funny because basically the way that I put it is October, everyone wants to look scary for Halloween. So they don't come into the salon. So that's basically the reality. Um, so if you guys aren't feeling busy right now, don't worry. People put it off because there's nothing really to look great for. So you got back to school rush, then you have the, the uh, Halloween, that kind of like the fall time. No one's really seeing anybody. Everybody's in school. Everybody's got their stuff going. And then come into November and coming out of October, uh, everybody's got to see their family for, you know, those holidays and then into the December holiday. So then it gets busy uh, through that. So you guys are not feeling that busy in the salon right now. Don't freak out. Uh, this is a good time to study up. So that's what I would say to you guys that are not busy in the salon. You're watching this podcast, so that's a good thing to do. Um, but also check out uh, tutorial videos. Learn when you're not busy. That's how you keep growing. I think the the biggest challenge in the salon is that we, when we're not busy, we just kind of get upset about it and we don't do anything to make sure that when we are busy, like that we keep growing throughout it. So don't complain. Don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. Just study up and get better when you're not busy so that when you are busy, you are becoming more successful. Uh, let's see. 
West Palm Beach, Alabama. Uh, advice. Let's see. Do, do, do. They maybe have a client that keeps rescheduling. How many times do you let people reschedule before you just cut your losses? So this is this is a question that comes up a lot. So let's take this as this is what do I do with a client that come that uh, reschedules their appointment often and so they're not coming in when they book their appointment. So what I'll do is if it becomes a problem where I'm noticing that that client is not coming in, I have a conversation with them. Um, and this is where we're, we're so quick to just get upset but never say anything. And I think it's really important to understand that you can say something. Um, this is your business, right? So if they don't come in, you don't make money. But they might not know that it's even a thing. They might think that they're rescheduling on you and it's not that big of a deal. And if you say to them, you know, um, the last few appointments that you have, you've had to reschedule. So there's a couple things that we can do. We can either take a deposit for your next appointment, which they're probably not going to want to do. Or you can say, you know, I'd rather you just call me when you definitely know when you can come in because there's no point in putting somebody in your book that always cancels. So um, when you say cut your losses, I don't think you have to do that. I think, you know, they're put on a list of people that are going to try to get in on your times that you're not busy. Um, but don't put them into your book prior if you know that there's somebody that uh, reschedules a lot. Um, so just just don't, like, be more vocal. I, I We get into these relationships with clients and I don't think we say anything. But I think the most important thing is communication through everything. So just make sure that you're communicating with your clients. Let them know uh, when you're, you know, if they're booking, how important it is that they come in. Uh, and that's, that's that. Let's see. Jennifer says she's 20 years in the business and still loves learning. Uh, that's awesome. I feel the same way. Uh, always trying to figure out new things. Um, let's see. I'm not confident enough. This is no, really. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Name. I'm not confident enough. I trained. Training and training, and I do know what I'm doing, but not. But I don't know how to build a clientele. That's what they're saying. Uh, how long does it take? So, that's a great question. Um, and this is something that actually kind of rings into like the whole um, post that I made about about the 15 minute haircut and all that that exploded the last couple of days or whatever. But um, that kind of goes back to. When you get out of beauty school, going into some place that kind of feeds you clients or going to a place where you're going to build your book or going into a studio situation, like it doesn't take that long to build your book as long as you're charging what you're worth, right? So here's where I think, and even a challenge in my career when I first started out where I think things um, become slower than they should be is when you're charging too much when you don't have the confidence, you don't have the skill set, you don't have all that. So what I would say to you is if you're not building, and this is everybody, this isn't somebody that, you know, just got out of school or it could be somebody that's been doing hair for 15 years and they just can't figure out how to get busier. You need to lower your prices. People need to really look deep within and, and take the ego out of it and charge what people are willing to pay. Sometimes we overprice ourselves, and we're just not, it's not that we're not that good at hair, but we're not that good at keeping people in our chair. And the lower, if you lower your prices a little bit, it changes the value of that uh, service, right? So your expectation going into, or a client's expectation going into getting their hair done by you might be a little bit different if they're not paying as much money. Then once you've built for about a year, at that price, at that price that's such a good value for people, then start to raise it because you don't have any room in your book. We tend to um, raise our prices so fast and it's because we want money and not because we actually deserve it, right? So you got to really think about, do I deserve a raise? And when you deserve a raise is when people are banging down the door and they can't get in, right? So make sure that when you start building your book, keep your prices low. Don't be afraid to grow with your clientele. So 
for instance, our prices at our salon right here, it's on the other side of the door. Our prices at this salon start at $35 for a haircut and they go up to $80 to $100 for a haircut. We have different clients that fit different people and we have different levels of stylists. Um, you know, we have Carly who's starting to build her book. So I'm not going to put Carly at a $50 to $60 haircut right away because that changes the expectation of what that client wants. So I want them to come in and be like, wow, that is the best $35, $40 haircut I have ever had in my life. And I got a great experience with it. That's a winning situation, right? Then when Carly is so busy that she can't get any more clients in, they're calling and there's, I, there's nothing she could do. Then we say, all right, we're going to raise your haircut, five bucks, 10 bucks, whatever. And some of those clients are going to say, you know what? It's not worth it for me. Uh, or I want to go to the next $35, $40 haircutter, or I want to stay with Carly. And some of them are going to stay. Some of them are going to go back down because they know that there's a good quality person at that price, or they're going to go up with Carly because Carly's built that relationship with them. So you got to think about those things. It's all about relationship in this business. It's very little with technical ability. Technical ability is a plus on top of relationship. So you got to look at the value. So when you're building your clientele, how long does it take? It takes as long as it takes, right? It can take a long time if you're not pricing yourself the right way. It took me three years to build my clientele. Um, since we started the salon, me and my wife, Christina, we've had this salon for a while. This is our, I think, 11th or 12th year uh, owning the salon. And when I first started out, I raised my haircut to $80 pretty fast. And the problem was, I was brand new out of school. I had no clients. So it took me a long time to convince one by one people to come in for 80 bucks to get a haircut. Now, people that work in our salon, it doesn't take them after a year, they're starting to see repeat guests every day, right? So, and you don't feel as um, kind of, you don't feel like you're not busy, right? They're not fully booked after a year necessarily, but they're building pretty quick, right? And within two years, you should have a very steady flow of clientele, right? Um, so that would be, that's my answer there. I hope that helps. But I think the biggest thing is know your value and you want to blow people out away with the service that you're giving, not try to charge as much as you can so that you can make some money quick. It's a long-term thing. You're building relationships with customers. You want to blow them away from the get-go and then let them grow with you. All right. And if I don't answer your question, I apologize. I'm trying to go. I see them flying through on all the different platforms. So I'm trying to catch them as I see them. Um, let's see. All right. John says, thank you for sharing your advice. You're very welcome. Um, Hello from Abington, Pennsylvania. That's where our son was born. Welcome. Um, let's see. Perfect advice. Helen. All right. Is your salon booth rent, commission, or employee? Our salon is commission um, for our employees, but they start out at uh, hourly. And then when the commission is more than the hourly, then they go on commission. Um, but we always start with a base pay of, of hourly first. Uh, let's see. All right, cool. So I'm going to, all right, really cool to see all of you guys on here. All right. I'm going to go to the questions from Instagram. Go ahead and post your, uh, your questions if you would like to, um, as you're live. Okay. So Capilla, I think it's, it's K-A-P-I-L-A -A, salon, uh, on Instagram is saying, I hate social media. Uh, I do it because I have to. How much is too much? Is there any other way of promotion that you recommend? So here, a lot of people, like, a lot of people say they hate social media. I don't really understand how you could hate social media. You know what I hated? I hated going door to door promoting myself, uh, handing out business cards to people, trying to meet people out and about at a restaurant or a club 
So, um, or through mail, like mailers sending out those. Um, so I think social media is such a great thing. Uh, when you say how much is too much, I, this is the thing. Like, and obviously, I, so I make my living through social media for the most part. So it, it's a tough, it's a, it's a weird, it's hard for me to answer for you because I don't know how you feel. I think it's too much if you think it's too much. Um, but what I would like you to understand is the importance of what social media is and how easy, and this is a conversation I had uh, when I did my presentation in Charlotte this weekend. Um, somebody was asking about t- targeting and just like being able to get more exposure from your posts and all that. I think you can work smarter on social media and not have to be on it every five seconds promoting yourself. Um, so let's put it this way. I'm going to give you some social media advice to kind of flip this thing around um, so that maybe you won't hate social media so much. But I want you to think about it this way in a, in a broader uh, way. So what we, what we do wrong on social media is that we take um, a photo of whatever, let's say our work, right? Um, And let's say she has blonde hair and long blonde hair, right? And we put that post out on social media on our salon page and no one really reacts to it. So what I want you guys to understand about Facebook and Instagram and all of that, how specific you can be at targeting an audience. Um, That is the number one thing. Understand that Google is your best friend. Look up how to target people on Facebook and Instagram because I can't just sit here and, and completely teach you guys. But think about it this way. If I have a picture of, a, of long blonde hair and I put it out there to a person that has curly hair or a person that has a pixie cut uh, or a guy, um, a lot of us are putting posts out there and it's not getting any reaction because we're putting it out to the wrong people. So think about it this way. If you could take that picture of beautiful blonde hair and post it to people in your area or your town in your surrounding area and target people that like things that are blonde, then you're going to have a more specific audience, right? Or if you have somebody, you have a picture of somebody with curly hair or a tip that you record on your phone that you put out on your social media, it's all about how to take care of curly hair or how to diffuse curly hair. These are things that you want to target out to your to a specific audience. So now you can pick people that are uh, in your town, but also love Diva Curl or love curly hair pages or subscribe to some kind of curly hair something. You could be very very specific for five bucks and target that. So, like those are things like you could never do that before. You you put out a mailer and it was like a picture of your salon or whatever and. Like you just pray that people come in for a 15% discount. Now you can actually impress people and you can specifically target people that have the, the issue that you're trying to target. So think about it that way and you're going to be a lot better off. So social media is actually a really great thing for promoting yourself and it's a really cheap way to target a specific audience. So it was when I was in Charlotte, I was like, you know, I put out a post on social media to promote um, the fact that I was going to be speaking in Charlotte. And what was so, what's so cool is that the post by itself would get no attention whatsoever. It, was, it wasn't that well done. It had a bunch of pictures of different people. Like no one really cared about the post. But if I take that same post and I target the surrounding area of Charlotte, maybe even within like 30, 40 miles of Charlotte, And I take that and I promote it to people that like Cosmoprof, which is who I was speaking for at the time. If I target people that like Cosmoprof and follow Cosmoprof and say that I'm doing um, a class in Charlotte to people around Charlotte, like that's how you promote it, right? So that's, that's the benefit of social media, being more and more specific, not just making a post and hoping that a bunch of people see it. So post hair of a blonde or curly hair and a guy sees it, you don't get any attention. doesn't really help you. You post it and you specifically target people. That's when you get the benefit. Um, let's see. Camera's coming back. There it is. All right. 
uh, uh, in Vogue hair designer says we have a system that seems to work full price. First visit 20% off second visit 15% off third visit. If you have been in your chair three times and are happy, chances are they'll stay. So here is, I'm going to say my opinion on, uh, discounting because, uh, here's what I think. I think people that like discounts, um, are discount people and I agree with you, but here's the thing. Usually the first few visits of a salon, we don't have a problem with retention. Uh, what happens is, and I talked about this for a long time, but the retention rate of a client six to eight visits in is 10%, right? So 10% of your clients, six to eight visits in, are going to be there. 90% of them are going to go somewhere else. And this is the reason why I think that happens or why that does happen. You come in, you do things like that, first visit, full price, whatever it is, but then you offer them 20% off, you offer them 15% off, whatever it is. And, and this isn't to say anything about your promotion. I think it's a great idea and it's great that you're doing things, right? Um, but at the same time, that gets them three visits in. It shouldn't be that hard to keep a customer three visits. The hard part is keeping them even longer than that. And usually what happens is a new customer comes in, we wow them, then they come in again. Let's say six weeks later, they come back in again, still wow them because they're still new. We're still trying new things, whatever. Three visits in, still working on that change, whatever we're doing. But then after that, four, five, six visits later, what happens is we stop like stop getting really excited at the door. We stop offering them water. We like, there's so many things that we stop doing. We stop trying new things because we think we know what they want. Um, we double book them because they've been in our chair for a long time and we double book them when we probably shouldn't double book them. Um, so all of those things happen and then six to eight visits in, we lose that customer. It's really important. You should take more care. Like I've said this for a long time. I like existing customers way more than I like new ones. First off, I don't really like talking to new people that often, um, face to face. And, but at the same time, established customers are what build your business to the core part of your business, right? New customers become existing, but from that second visit, the, the day that they come back, you should take care of them forever. That should be the way that it works, right? Try new things. Um, take care of that new clientele. We're always obsessed with getting a new customer, but we're not as obsessed with actually taking care of the existing ones, the ones that we should be taking care of. So hopefully that advice helps you because that's, that's the core building a business. Think about your existing customer. Don't worry about the new ones. They always come. New ones always come if you take care of the existing. All right. Karen says, amen. Amen. Um, Chrissy says, I'm interested in your partnership stylist program. Can you explain the benefits? So this is a great, great way to uh, kind of introduce it to any of you guys that are watching. So our partner stylist program is something that we're, we're developing and trying to make better every day. What it is, is it's our app. So on our app, you get online training. So I put out training courses that are full length classes um, that I don't put online, uh, but I put them out there because they're more specific. Right. So, um, when I put out any of these other videos, the whole world sees it. People are asking about their hair, all of those things. Like not everybody is a, uh, a hairdresser that watches everything that we do. The partner stylist program is a very specific program to do online training courses. So I put those out and then as a partner stylist, you get put on a map and that map is what I promote on here. So people that are looking for a good hairdresser can actually go on that map and find our partner stylists and get their hair done by them. So uh, that's the benefit of the program. It's really the map. The education, you can, you can get it uh, through our social media for free. Um, the partner program is all about getting put on the map and we're in development with some really cool things that I can't talk about yet, but um, that we'll be launching pretty soon uh, within the next couple months that hopefully will even take it to another level, which I'm really excited about. So um, hopefully you want to be a part of the program. It's really cool. It's 
cheap. It's as much as Netflix, but you get promotion and you get training online and it's a good tax rep. So um, if you want free education, you'll get that too. That's on all of our channels, uh, putting videos out every day. So you can join if you want. You don't have to. Don't worry about it. Uh, but love to have you. <laughs> uh, let's see. Long time back. I watch your videos. Thank you. Um, I have a small hair studio here in Greece for both men and women. Unfortunately, most of my guests are men. Uh, since female clients think I'm not good for them. Is there anything I can do for that? So it's Christos, I think. Um, so here's the thing. If you're, if you're attracting more men than you are female guests, um, it, it, like it's hard to tell, like, I don't know your work. I don't know what you do. Um, maybe you're promoting more male work because that's mostly what you do. My advice for anybody that wants to change up what they do. So if they, if they seem to be more, uh, focused on men's cutting or, uh, they're just doing color, but they want to do cuts, you know, like th that kind of thing. Uh, if you're not doing currently what you want to be doing, even if it's like not hair or whatever it is, right? If you, it's grab a model, get a model, find somebody that will let you do what you want to eventually do behind the chair and start trying that on them, taking pictures of it, capturing it, putting it out on the internet, right? Start targeting, do those targeted ads that I talked about earlier. So do a model. Let's say you do mostly men's cuts. You want to start doing female cuts. Then you get a female in, cut her hair, take picture, lots of pictures of it, put it out on the internet, promote it as an ad for yourself. Five bucks in your area, people with whatever hair type that you want, right? So people this age range, women this age range, just put it out there. A beautiful picture of work. A lot of times what we do is we're promoting the wrong thing. We're promoting an ad or something that doesn't bring anything to the, per to the other person. Uh, what you need is a beautiful, a beautiful picture of your work so that it draws attention anyways, right? And then you'll get more attraction on your ad if it's something that people actually want to see um, than if it wasn't. So what I mean by that gets a little bit confusing. I'm not... I get scrambled with words sometimes. Here's the thing. Think about it this way. If I, um, like, if I put out a picture of shampoo and nobody likes it because it doesn't bring anything to anybody, right? Just a picture of shampoo. And then I'm like, well, I wanted it to reach people. So now I'm going to pay Facebook or Instagram to then promote it. It's still not going, even if it gets shoved in somebody's face, they're still not going to like it because it doesn't do anything for the person. If you do a hair tip or you show a hair cutting tip or you show yourself cutting hair and then a beautiful image at the end of a, a finished model or, or client or whoever it is, and you showcase that, now the person on the other end is like, wow, that person's really talented. I want to go to them, right? So the people pay to promote posts that, shouldn't you shouldn't like take your best post and this is something uh for all of you guys out there if you've got a post that got the most attention on your instagram or facebook that's the one you should pay for for people to see so let's say this post got a hundred likes but most of my posts get eight likes well the one that got a hundred likes that's the one you put your money into always put a post out see how it reacts then pay don't put a post out and pay right away. See if people actually like it first. Um, that's another little good tip for just so you're not wasting your money on social media. Um, da, da, da. So hopefully that helps you. All right. I got time for some more. All right. I got time for one more. Because Carly just texted me and said her client's here, and I'm gonna go watch her cut his hair. So, all right. Um, one more question, and then I'll come back next week and I'll answer more of these questions from Instagram, just in case. Uh, obviously, if I didn't get to yours. Um, all right. 
this is a good question. Uh, this person actually had a few good questions, so I'll answer one of them today. Does consistency to follow a theme or style matter when you post your content? Why or why not? So I think a theme is probably one of the most important things. Um, not a theme, but like a style, right? So especially like when you look at your salon page, your salon page should look like, like when people see an image of yours, I feel like it's great to, for somebody to be able to look at that and be like, that's salon gratitude or that's, you know, whatever, or that's Matt's picture. Like, I think everybody has their style. Um, Salons get mixed up. They just kind of post random stuff all the time. Use your stories for posting random things and get your style together and edit your photos and have one person edit those things, right? So so that it kind of all goes together. Find what your style is. Um, for our salon, all of our stylists take pictures of their work, but I actually, for the salon page, I'll go in and edit them because I want the same style, the same feeling whether it's a picture of the salon or it's a picture of hair, I want it to all kind of go together. I, th- I just think it, it's more appealing when you have a style that kind of all kind of matches and goes together. So things aren't just crazy. It's like if you walk into somebody's house and they just got stuff everywhere and different wall painted, like different colors that don't really go together. Like you gotta, you want it to create a vibe, right? So that people can get an idea for, for what you're all about. So Hopefully that helps you um, and hopefully, uh, you know, that answered some of your questions. Uh, let's see. All right. Let's uh, wrap it up here. So it's been fun hanging out with you guys here on a Wednesday afternoon. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. We'll definitely be back with more of these sitting down, answering your questions. I'm going to do a live class on YouTube and Facebook tomorrow. Um, I'm going to cut some hair. So we'll do that live. That'll be fun. So I'll get to interact with you guys some more. Um, Thank you to all of you guys that hung in here during your day. It's a lot of fun. Um, Can you teach color theory? Um, We actually are. So we did start doing some color classes. Brian's doing them on the app. Uh, If you're not part of the partner program, then um, we'll try to do some more of those or at least grab some clips from that stuff and put it up on YouTube as well for you. Uh, But we are doing some color stuff now for sure. Um, All right. Thursday morning here. Is it Thursday here? Nope. It's Wednesday. Tomorrow's Thursday. All right. Thank you guys so much. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks. Thanks.